let us talk about t distribution today so t distribution is also like a normal distribution but it has a heavier tail what do we mean by this let me just write few points t distribution is a type of probability distribution <clears throat> that is similar to normal distribution uh, with a difference T distribution has heavier tails. Heavier tails. So if I'm just going to draw two distributions out here. So I have uh, one distribution like the normal distribution. like this mm -hmm. and the another distribution is t distribution it has a heavier tail like this it has a heavier tail so this pink one is T distribution, while this blue one is normal distribution, right? And uh, when you say that uh, it has a heavier T, it means that it has high kurtosis also. It means that there is a greater chance that T distribution will have the values which are far away from the mean. Uh, so, so T distribution, please write. will have more extreme values As compared to normal distribution, right? As compared to normal distribution. So, and the other thing is that T distribution has higher kurtosis. So the probability that you can get the values which are far away from the mean is higher. So <clears throat> T distribution, will have higher kurtosis than the normal distributions. So, I mean, these two points are not different in a way, but what they are saying is 
this point is actually saying the first one only that there is a high probability that you can have an extreme value or in other words there is a high probability there is a greater chance that the values will be far away from the mean so extreme values mean that it will it will be far away from the mean right it will be far away from the mean okay now kurtosis i mean in case if something is a higher kurtosis that means it is heavy tailed higher kurtosis is equivalent of saying heavy tailed so you might want to see uh, my recording on kurtosis where i talked about these tails and one more thing is kurtosis is more concerned with the tails instead of the peak right that is the idea okay acha other thing is that in case if there is uh, the higher variance around the mean in case of the t distribution it means the confidence interval which you are going to get in the t distribution as compared to the normal distribution they will be wider so the confidence intervals which you are going to get in the t distribution will be wider than the confidence intervals which you are going to get in the normal distribution let me just write that point for you right so the confidence interval <clears throat> the confidence interval intervals in t distribution will be wider as compared to the normal distribution as compared to the normal distribution huh? i mean the intuitive reasoning is 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 simple that uh, because there is a high probability of uh, of uh, uh, the extreme values in case of t distribution is compared to the normal distribution the confidence intervals are going to be also wider now when you say confidence interval it means the interval in which this or the value may lie right uh, so t distribution is more widely uh, spread out around the mean as compared to the normal distribution as compared to the normal distribution i'll give you an example uh, i'll give you an example so in case of normal distribution we use something which is called the z score which is x minus mu upon standard deviation <laughs> x minus mu upon standard deviation uh, so x is the value of the variable mu is the population mean and sigma is the population standard deviation mu is the population mean and sigma is the and sigma is the population standard deviation okay this much uh, you already know from our earlier recordings of the normal distribution we have <clears throat> calculated that right well 
Z score is telling you what that you are converting the individual score into the standard score. That's what you're doing. Uh, that is what Z score is. In case of P distribution, you get something which is called P score, right? Which is X minus mu upon s upon root n s upon root n uh, so t scores are used when you do not have an idea about the population standard deviation hmm. so t scores are also the standard scores so from the individual scores you are converting them to a standard score but you're going to use this when you do not have an idea about the population standard deviation. Uh, so please write like Z scores. These scores are also conversion of individual scores into a standard form, right? But you use T scores when you do not have the data of the population standard deviation when you don't know the population standard deviation. However, these codes are used. When you don't know the population standard deviation. So what you do is that you try to estimate, sorry, estimate the population standard deviation uh, using S. So you make an estimate of the population standard deviation from your sample. Uh, that's what you do in the T distribution. You make an estimate of what? Of population standard deviation by using the sample which you have by using sample, right? So S is nothing but the standard deviation of a sample, right? standard deviation of a sample. So you will be using <clears throat> you will be using uh, this guy t distribution in the following cases uh, that is uh, you have uh, the standard deviation sorry this population uh, standard deviation is not known and the number of uh, the observations are less than 30. so in case if you have number of observations greater than 30 there is hardly any difference between the t distribution and z distribution that is your normal distribution uh, so please write this so what is the main idea when you do so i mean when you have the number of observations which are greater than 30 you call that something as the large sample size uh, so t distribution is also similar 
to the normal distribution for the large samples. But for the small ones, right, there can be some difference between the two. Uh, so when you have a small sample size, that is when n is less than 30, right? So we are less certain. When we have some, when we have small samples, means small sample size. So we are less certain. About the true population mean. About the true population mean. Uh, So we use T distribution. To produce wider confidence intervals. Right. Uh, so these, I mean, producing wider confidence intervals means that have a higher chance of containing a true population mean. That have higher chance. of containing the true population mean, right? Uh, you have a higher chance of containing the true population mean. So you will be using T distribution when the population mean is not known and when the sample size is less than or equal to 30. Hmm. Uh, so in, you call that as the small sample. Hmm. So please write this. Hmm. So use T distribution. When we do not know about the population standard deviation, right? And uh, the sample size is less than or equal to 30. sample size is less than or equal to 30. Uh, so um, if the sample size is uh, large enough and the population standard deviation is also known, use Z, I mean, use your uh, normal distribution, use Z score. Mm -hmm. So this is the main difference between, uh, between uh, what do you call, uh, T distribution and the Z distribution or T distribution of the and the normal distribution. So although I'm not doing confidence interval out here, but it's easy to calculate the confidence interval like this. So you have X plus minus uh, T one minus alpha by two 
n minus 1 s upon root n right so this is the uh, confidence interval so what do you call this uh, that is where, what 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 all of these mean x is the sample mean x is the sample mean in this distribution and uh, and uh, this t1 minus alpha by 2 is basically it means uh, this is the critical value of t which you get from the t table uh, for alpha uh, level of significance so i haven't told you about these things abhi i'm just writing the formula for the confidence interval because i will be doing hypothesis testing uh, so it will otherwise it will take us in a completely different way so right now i'm just telling you the difference between the t and the normal distribution just an intuitive aspect so when i talk about the hypothesis testing i'll be talking about these things in detail but right now i'm just telling you this and <clears throat> why are we saying alpha by 2 because if it is a two tailed test so you check it for alpha by 2 region so if it is like 5% level of significance you cut 2.5 and 2.5% from both the tails. Uh, but these are technical things. We'll talk about that later. Uh, let me just write the point for you because I've been talking about critical, uh, sorry, confidence intervals. So it's, it, it makes sense to put it here. So it is the critical T value. It is the critical T value. based on the based on the significance level alpha and sample size in so n is the sample size And S is S is the sample standard deviation. So this can be a good note for you uh, that what is, I mean, when do you use T distribution and how is this different from normal? distribution. So this is what I wanted to do in this recording. Thank you, Vita.